Thank you. I have stressed in these hearings that the whistleblower complaint was merely a pretext for Donald Trump's political opponents to do what they've been trying to do since he was elected, oust the president from office. A brief timeline will il illustrate the wide range of extraordinary attacks his administration has faced. I'm going to start in June of 2016, when Donald Trump was just a candidate. On behalf of the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign, Fusion GPS hires Christopher Steele to write the Steele dossiers, a collection of false allegations attributed to Russian sources claiming that Donald Trump is a Russian agent. Fast forward to January 6 of 2017. FBI Director James Comey briefs President-elect Trump on the Steele dossier. The briefing is leaked to CNN, and soon afterwards, BuzzFeed publishes the dossiers. January 20th, on President Trump's inauguration day, the Washington Post runs a story headlined, quote, the campaign to impeach Donald Trump has begun. January 30th, 10 days later, the whistleblower's current lawyer tweets, hashtag coup has started, first of many steps, hashtag rebellion, hashtag impeachment will follow immediately. March 22nd, Democrats on this committee falsely declare on national TV that they have more than circumstantial evidence that the Trump campaign colluded with Russia. July 12th, an article of impeachment is filed against President Trump in the House of Representatives. November 15th, Democrats file additional articles of impeachment against President Trump. As you see, this was just in President Trump's first year in office. He was subject, subjected to a coordinated smear operation designed to falsely portray him as a Russian agent, as well as attempts to impeach him. This all occurred before his now infamous call with President Zelensky. In 2018, the attacks continued, often from executive branch officials charged with implementing his policies. On February 2nd, 2018, Intelligence Committee Republicans release a memo revealing that the FBI used fabrications the steel dossier to get a warrant to spy on a Trump campaign associate. September 5th, the New York Times prints a column by an anonymous Trump administration official who explains that he and other senior officials are, quote, working diligently from within to frustrate parts of Trump's agenda, unquote. December 7th, James Comey admits to Congress the Steele dossier was unverified before and after the FBI used it to get a warrant to spy on a Trump campaign associate. The Russia hoax continued to be the main focus of attacks going into 2019, but when that entire operation collapsed, a new impeachment pretext had to be found. May 4th, 2019, on national television, a Democratic congressman proclaims, quote, I'm concerned that if we don't impeach this president, he will get reelected, unquote. July 24th of this year, special counsel Robert Mueller testifies to Congress about his report, which debunked the conspiracy theory that the Trump campaign associates conspired with Russia to hack the 2016 elections. July 25th, just the very next day, a new anti-Trump operation begins as someone listens to the president's phone call with Ukrainian President Zelensky and leaks the contents to the so-called whistleblower. September 13th, Democrats on this committee take the extraordinary step of issuing a press release related to the whistleblower's complaint. October 2nd, it's revealed that Democratic staff on this committee had contact with the whistleblower before he submitted his complaint to the Inspector General, contradicting Democrat denials that such contact had occurred. October 31st, Halloween, probably the most appropriate day. Democrats in the House of Representatives vote to open an official impeachment inquiry against President Trump. 
What you've seen in this room over the past two weeks is a show trial. The planned result of three years of political operations and dirty tricks. Campaigns waged against this president. And like any good show trial, the verdict was decided before the trial ever began. After all, after denouncing the president for years as a Russian agent and a threat to democracy, how could the Democrats not impeach him? If they don't have to move, if they don't move to overthrow him, it would indicate that they don't really believe their own dire warnings about the threat he poses. The Democrats only needed a pretext. When their Russian dossiers and investigations failed to do the job, they moved to Plan B, the Ukraine hoax. This spectacle with its secret depositions and mid-hearing press conferences is not meant to discover the facts. It was designed to produce a specific storyline to be pushed forward by the Democrats and their supporters in the media. Ladies and gentlemen, as we approach Thanksgiving, Speaker Pelosi has just made clear, just today, USMCA, free trade deal with Canada and Mexico, it will boost our economy, it won't be signed this year. So I hope Mr. Schiff will clarify how much longer we will waste on this effort and what other vital legislation he's willing to sacrifice for this impeachment crusade. Will there be even more secret depositions accompanied by the usual flood of Democratic leaks? Will we have more public hearings with Democrat witnesses but not ours? Minority are in the dark about what this committee will be doing when we return. And so is America. James Madison warned us about the danger posed by the tyranny of the majority. To avoid that threat, our founders created a constitutional republic. But is there a better example of the tyranny of majority than the way this impeachment process has been run in the House of Representatives? process that is grossly unfair can only stem from a cynical majority that is willing to break long established precedents, trample on legitimate minority concerns, and impose their absolute will on this body through sheer force of numbers. Exploiting the Intelligence Committee as a venue for impeachment has been one of the grossest abuses in a process filled with cynical manipulations large and small. But this farce will soon move to the Judiciary Committee where impeachment rightfully belongs. I wish my Republican colleagues well in fighting this travesty and defending the idea, which at one time received bipartisan support not long ago. But the American people's vote actually means something. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.